Uh, as Ajay said, energy, efficiency, and sustainability is a crucial challenge for all of us in the streaming media industry right now. Uh, it's also something that, if done right, can not only help save energy and save the planet, but can also help our businesses and can help us become more efficient. Back in 2020, when I was editor of streaming media, I assigned an article called The Greening of Streaming. Dom Robinson, who uh, is one of my uh, colleagues at Ideas and a longtime streaming media contributor, and Tim Siglin wrote the article, investigated what was going on in the realm of, of sustainability at the time. And at the time, a lot of the focus was on data centers and content delivery networks. And one of the things they discovered as they investigated that was that even though that's where the media was putting most of the focus, uh, focusing only on data centers and CDNs is really missing the forest for the trees if we're going to stick with uh, green metaphors here. Uh, you know, first of all, it's important to remember that CDNs and data centers are provisioned for peak traffic. It's not like they spin everything down when, when the World Cup isn't going on. Uh, so second of all, they're just one part of a huge media value chain, uh, value chain, the huge streaming ecosystem. And Dom put together a flow chart that looks like this. I don't expect you to be able to read all of that, but that's kind of the point. One of the things that Dom and Tim discovered was that in this streaming uh, ecosystem, which begins with ingest and encoding on the right-hand side and ends at the consumer device on the left-hand side, any changes in energy consumption at any one of those points might offload that energy consumption somewhere else. It's impossible for the industry or any single element of the industry to exist in a silo and make changes that have impact that might not have a negative impact perhaps somewhere else. So Dom and the other members of Ideas decided to, to, be, uh, to found an organization called the Greening of Streaming. Uh, they founded that in 2021. And the, uh, the idea behind it is to have an, in, an inist industry consortium where the members investigate ways in which that we can all, uh, all save energy and bring about uh, increases and improvements in sustainability. As you can see, we now have about 30 members. I'm sure Dom Robinson has been in touch with many of you in this room about becoming members of Greening of Streaming, and he will continue to bug you about that uh, as time goes on if you're not already members. So what exactly is Greening of Streaming? As I said, it's a members organization. All of the initiatives are driven by the members, uh, taking a look at ways to make real changes through education and engineering through the development and propagation of best practices. It's a forum for members to discuss internal and external issues. You don't need to be a member to participate and contribute to Greening of Streaming, uh, but obviously you have more input if you are indeed a member. And you'll note that Greening of Streaming does not talk about carbon at all. Carbon is a huge issue, uh, but we don't talk about carbon footprint, and that's by design, in part because we're skeptical of the efficacy and the ability to actually measure carbon usage, but also because energy usage, unlike carbon usage, is precisely and accurately measurable. And so kind of the first remit of greening of streaming has been all about how we go about uh, measuring that energy usage and how we can leverage that information to make actionable changes. The organization is not seeking to propose standards. Uh, we feel that uh, even though we are certainly willing to work with industry organizations and regulatory bodies, it's much better for the industry to make the changes on our own uh, before and to possibly prevent external regulation on the industry uh, that might be onerous in ways that, that uh, make it more difficult to do business. And finally, a key point is no greenwashing. Uh, members of Greening of Streaming agree not to present any data showing how green they are without being able to back it up. And members also agree to hold each other to account to make sure that that, uh, that no greenwashing commitment is, is upheld. Greening and streaming is divided into nine working groups. I'm not going to get into the weeds on all of these, uh, but the key ones for most of us in this room are the working group four on distribution, encoding and transcoding and delivery, I'm sorry, uh, distribution and delivery, working group six on transcoding and working group eight on decoding. And putting together those working groups led us to a, an interesting proposition. What if the default streaming encoding profile was energy optimized rather than quality optimized, 
with acceptable quality for general viewing rather than, as I said, typically it's quality optimized and typically over provisioned with no energy consideration in mind. That's kind of a radical proposition. One of the speakers last year uh, from, um, from SVT uh, was talking about how internally she was encouraging producers to, uh, to, to ingest in no greater resolution, no greater quality than 4K and sometimes no greater than 1080p. That's, that's count completely contradictory to the way we've been trained to think, right? Always ingest and store in the highest quality possible. But how many people really, how many viewers really can appreciate or even care about that quality? I'd like to share an anecdote uh, a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago at one of the greening of streaming meetings, an engineer for a large broadcaster, an engineer who was in fact responsible for video quality, um, shared that uh, they had gotten a new television a couple of months ago. And uh, at one point, his son, his teenage son came in the room and said to him, hey, dad, can we turn on 4K on the TV? And he said, no, it's already on. And uh, in fact, no, it hadn't been on. And this engineer for a very large international broadcaster who was responsible for being the golden eyes in his organization didn't realize that he'd been watching 1080p for six months. Um, and I think that's even more true for most consumers, certainly. So again, we're talking about changing the way we approach what we do as an industry on the technical side of things in ways that make, uh, make our product more sustainable and more energy efficient. And that in turn led us to something called the Less Accord, which is the Low Energy Sustainable Streaming Accord. And again, note that it's not about a standard. It's not about uh, necessarily even best practices. It's about coming to an accord, an agreement among the members of Greening of Streaming to focus on clear, definable products or projects that have a real impact on energy usage in the short term. And the organization is sort of going after the low hanging fruit first because, well, I mean, why wouldn't you? It's, uh, it, it's what's right there in front of us. And it's got several primary goals. Um, number one, it doesn't necessarily negatively impact consumers or reduce their choices. If, for instance, we were to enact a, uh, a gold button accord, similar to the red button on the, on the TV remote, where consumers could press the gold button when they want to upscale or, or move up to 4K or a higher resolution, they would have that opportunity. But by default, the content would be delivered to them in the best or lowest acceptable quality, uh, which, as I said, typically is, 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 is not necessarily have to be 4K. Uh, it should be data-driven and robust wherever possible. It needs to have broad support across all industry verticals that are streaming video. Um, and again, uh, it has to be holistic and not siloed so that when we go back to that flow chart I showed a few slides ago, it doesn't simply, any changes in energy consumption or efficiency don't simply kick the can down the road to someone else or increase energy consumption somewhere else. And so we're focusing on four projects right now. I'll go through them briefly. Intelligent distribution model shifting. Can we better find each of the three content delivery distribution models, uh, unicast, peer-to-peer, -peer, and net layer multicast in a way that lets CDN seamlessly shift between them, much as a car shifts between gears when needed, um, so that it's always using the most energy optimized way to deliver content. The second is that good enough ladder and codec configuration. Can we save energy through using codecs that deliver good enough quality to the consumer without robbing them of choice? Uh, the third is the energy breadcrumb metadata stamps, which uh, asks if we can obtain useful energy information from streaming systems that will allow tech providers, content delivery networks, and coding farms to intelligently determine workflow strategies that will be the most energy efficient and finally, hardware and infrastructure optimization. There have been some incredible advances in hardware encoding, for instance, and hardware optimization in the last few years. Can we use those to save energy at the encoding level? Like I said, that's kind of the low hanging fruit, but we also encourage our members to think outside the box. Uh, some of the projects that are currently being investigated are the immersion cooling of workloads and data centers. And one of our members has actually kicked off kind of a, a moonshot proof of concept to put micro data centers in wind turbines, put them in the turbines at the source so that when there's surplus energy there, that can be used for things like video encoding and machine learning and AI training that'll move some of the most energy intensive processes entirely off otherwise renewable wasted uh, energy. So 
as I said, while we're focused on the low hanging fruit, we're also open to any and all ideas. And that's really the spirit of the Greening of Streaming organization uh, to, to leave nothing off the table, to consider everything and anything that might possibly allow us to save energy, hopefully help save the planet in the long run, but also do so in a way that, that helps all of our businesses. So we do hope that you'll consider joining Greening of Streaming if you haven't already. As I said, I know Don Robinson has probably been in touch with many of you already about that and will continue to do so. Uh, but please do consider it as you're looking at your sustainability strategies moving forward. I know that in this era of cost cutting, and that certainly seemed to be the buzzword that came out of IBC was cost cutting and focusing on profits. That doesn't necessarily contradict the goal of moving towards greater sustainability in the streaming media industry. So. Thanks so much for allowing me to have a few minutes to talk about greening of streaming. If you do have any questions, catch me during one of the breaks, or as I said, contact Dom Robinson directly. 